to the K to the K to the K. Anthony, today we are going to the movies. We are back. Oh, back to the movies, Carl. Back what? to the movies. Popcorn in a, hand. Gone for a tearjerker, haven't we? I mean, we have. We have gone through a very emotional roller coaster of a drama um, and an all round fucking exceptional film, in my yeah, opinion. But we, we've sort of done three of these now, haven't we? The first one we listed our favourite wrestling related movies. So yep. we didn't deep dive into any of them. The second one, we went for our favourite movie wrestling wise. In a more goofy sense, like I absolutely love Ready to Rumble and always will, but it's just not the same sort of movie. This one is a very gritty, sad, serious movie that it gets you. It's I always class this as like the Rocky of the wrestling world. Yeah, and it's it, like it's such a good movie, but for such a different reason. So this weirdly, this eighth of the movies is going to be such a different segment because it, it we're not talking in the same sort of. This was funny and that was jovial and that this is like this is quite a um, a tough film in a lot of senses but you can totally yeah. get behind what he's going through you know yeah I think though that is the brilliance of this movie is the fact of how real it is you know there are wrestlers from especially from the eighties and so on and so forth who went on to be big stars who you know it was slightly before the big boom of wrestling where you can make a lot of money doing it um. And, you know, they put wrestling on the map, but then as they got older, they weren't suitable anymore. And so, you know, what what do you do at that point? You, you, you've done one thing your whole life. You've gone on, you've had some fame, you've, you know, you've had experience of having crowds behind you and chanting your name and stuff like that. And we've spoken before about how hard it must be to, to let that feeling go because, it you know, it's an adrenaline booster. It's a confidence booster. Oh, it's, yeah. You know, the and fans the and love you, where... don't I think if, if anything helps you understand what wrestlers go through, it's probably going to be this film. Like, yeah. for the, like, let's give a brief summary for those who may not have seen it. And if you haven't seen it and you're listening to us, what the fuck are you doing? Go and watch it. Come back, obviously. Come back. <laughs> yeah, you know, we well, want, of course. Yeah. We want yeah. you here. But yeah. like, watch the film. It's awesome. But basically, it follows um, Mickey Rourke's character of Randy the Ram Robinson. Um and as you quite rightly said, in a lot of ways there, Carl, uh, famous, rose to fame in the 80s, past his prime when we figured out with him in the film, working in a supermarket, um, and still does wrestling on, a, on an independent sense, but not quite to the same level, and basically wants to have that like that big match, I think sets up a, a match against his, one of his most notable opponents, um, I don't know if this was deliberately a nod to Jericho, but that's where my head goes because he was the Ayatollah. Um, <laughs> and then suffers a, I want to say it was a heart attack, but uh, undergoes surgery and the like, and basically told, you can't wrestle, that's it, done. Makes the difficult choice not to do it, tries to reconnect with his daughter, so you get the whole family life difficulty. He was estranged from her. Again, almost part of a symptom of the wrestling business because he was because the nature of it, the travel of it, the substance abuse of it, and that sort of thing. Um, and then, very sadly, towards the end of the film, although he knows this could kill him, makes the choice to have this match anyway, because he can't put wrestling down. He can't leave it. And yeah. I think that's what it, that's what gets you. And, I mean, the ending of the film, which we'll, obviously we'll talk about when we get there, but even the way they've done it is like, it's so kind of... Um, I don't... In a way, it's open speculation, but I don't think it is. But we'll... we'll, we'll We'll get to that, but I mean, like, let's talk about. Um, I think you sort of listed out how you wanted to structure your car, but that's briefly what the film is about and what it follows. And um, and it, I say, incredibly sad but incredibly awesome film at the same time. Yeah, I think um, you know, don't you know, the, the, the stuff on the document are just notes for me, but um, even without looking at that, I think this film tackled some very serious topics and issues that you know, pro wrestlers have to go through, almost, you know what I mean? Like, it is that, that fall from grace and that kind of how do you pick yourself back up and how do you still, you know, be a star? You know, in the, in this film, you know, Mickey Rourke's character is, as you said, way past his best. He's still in the sunbeds. He's still, bleach, you know, bleaching his hair, doing the wrestler thing, you know. He's, he's doing these independent shows where he's not making any money, Um, you know, the... The promoters are apologising for him, like, oh, I'm sure, that I thought the gate was going to be bigger and stuff, and he just does it to try and get by, he's working in a supermarket, he's living out of his van, um, 
you know, you know it's, and, like, it's like even bits in the supermarket get me because like he's famous but he's not like it's a really fucked up um, thing to go yeah. through when he's known so people are seeing him and that that almost fuels his addiction to be famous and to be known as a wrestler but like I can see how he ended up where he does in the film where he's like no I'm gonna go and have that big match because like there's scenes there where he's in the supermarket I think he's working on the deli counter there's people who recognise him and it's sparing him on yeah. you know away from the normal life that he's trying to have because he knows he can't wrestle and it, it, like it's things like that that get me and I'm like how do you put that down when you can't really even you know you, you're well known at the same time yeah. so you like I don't know it's, no it's, absolutely yeah. you know so you know it kind of tackles that it tackles all the kind of substance abuse and you know, things like that. As far as, I touched on the heart attack thing, but obviously that they made it very clear that that was because of steroid use. So they even they're, well, they're, I mean, they've got they've, they've got they've a guy got in touching. the film. They've got a guy in the film who basically says to me, like, you know, what you need, I can get you these, you know, Percocets. I can get you uppers, downers. I can get you steads. I can get you, you know, fucking growth hormone. I can get you cocaine. I, I can, like, you know, and all that kind of stuff. It was readily available to a lot of these wrestlers, especially back then, you know, we've just spoken about the plane ride from hell controversy and how, you know, the back, the back backstage, you know, the, the locker room kind of etiquette is, and it's such a carny show. And this film highlights that, you know, in, in plain sight of, of what yeah. the, what these wrestlers, you, you know, you think about it, they've got this, you know, ego, this, you know, superiority complex of being these mega stars. You've got money, you've got girls, you know, throwing themselves at them. You've got access know, to I, all these drugs and steroids, and it. and in some ways they need them because like people often go on about wrestling being fake, and we we've often talked about this like it's it's scripted rather than fake. It still fucking hurts, right? Mm-hmm. But there's this expectation that you have to be that that superhuman when you're performing. That most wrestlers, especially back in the eighties, when <coughs> they weren't anywhere near as I don't think it's unfair to say they weren't anywhere near as looked after as you do now. Mm-hmm. Um, so they were putting their bodies through punishments. So, it, you know, it's quite typical that you end up taking something to deal with that pain. You know, yeah. so it wasn't even like a like a recreation. Let's all do cocaine. It was like no, like they they were taking stuff <laughs> to, to numb the fucking pain because it was like like this guy was already past his prime in the film, so yeah. he's not in like peak condition and he's still taking bumps. You know, and they make it very clear, uh, like the 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 mindset it puts you in. I think is. is it's really well executed, really well executed. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, you know, another topic they cover in this is very much how, you know, estranged he is from his daughter. I think they borrowed a lot of this from, you know, the real life of Jake the Snake Roberts. If you've ever seen um, Beyond the Mat, that's a very, you know, another fantastic mm-hmm. wrestling movie, uh, you know, documentary where we look into the life of Jake the Snake and you can see, you know, how estranged he was from his daughter and, you know, the fact that, that he was just such a fuck up and just let her down constantly, you know, ultimately led to her just cutting yeah. ties with him altogether. And, and I think that, um, I that think plays out. Right, that, like you say, there's, there's almost beat for beat scenes in this film that, that touch on that, isn't it? Yeah, no, it, it, it plays out massively. And, and, you know, you do properly feel for the guy because he doesn't mean to be a fuck up. You know what I mean? Like, you can see he genuinely enjoys, you know, reconnecting with his daughter and he doesn't know what he's doing. He's never been around. He's lived his whole life on the road, but he knows he's got this daughter and he wants to make it up to her, but he just can't stop being a fuck up. Um, That's the thing, because I think that there's a particular scene isn't it, where he, he sort of builds that bridge with her. He agrees to meet up with her on like like the Sunday or whatever um, and spend the day together and then ends up sleeping the entire Sunday away because he got fucked up the night before. Yeah. And it, like you say, it wasn't deliberate. It, no. like, you know, obviously, you could always argue he was he was a like master of his own choices, but this is the thing like he he was just he was, he was a fuck up, and that's what happened. And he fucked up and slept the day away, and without meaning to let her down again. And then I think that's where it, it sort of echoes the whole Jake the Snake stuff because I think it's at that point in the film that she's like, "No, we're done." Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so you know, there's that aspect, and then you know, and a really underlooked aspect of this film as well is the fact that. You look at him, he, he can't make ends meet, he can't he can't pay his rent, he's living in his van, you know, he's literally living paycheck to paycheck, he's trying to take more shifts at the supermarket, and then when he gets some money, he goes to the strip club to speak to this, you know, this stripper who's played by Marissa Tomei, who does a fantastic job in this film, by the way, um, so, so, you know, great performance from her, um, 
And I believe as well they like because you 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 would be wrong for not knowing this because Marissa Tomei uh, looks fantastic for her age, but uh, they were trying to sort of mirror um, what he was going through in there, and like she was essentially doing what she does best past her prime as well, yeah. which is uh, an interesting parallel. No, you know, absolutely. You know, I think they, they tried to make that quite um, prevalent throughout. Obviously, you know, Randy comes to her defence a few times when there's these guys going like, all right, grandma and stuff. And, you know, he's he ultimately, you know, she wants to get out as well and wants to make a, a better life for herself. And, you mm. know, it's it's just such a, it's such a fucking, I, I'm a massive fan of like character driven films. This is such oh, a yeah. character driven yeah. film because you look at the journeys they've, that they've both been on as individuals and stuff as well. Mm-hmm. And you just... You know, she, in, you know, in her own way, she's a fuck up as well. She's got a kid, and she she's trying to make ends meet. She wants to make a better life for a kid. <laughs> that's not why. That's not why she's a fuck up. That's not what I meant. Um, <laughs> but like, you know, she's trying to make ends meet, and she's trying to do the best for her kid, and trying to move into this condo and stuff, and have this better life. And you know, she's doing what she can, but she, you know, she doesn't want to be doing it. Um, and yeah, I you know, the only the only bit of the film that I wasn't a fan of. If I'm honest, because I love this film. The only bit of the film I wasn't a fan of is obviously as the film progresses, Mickey Rourke's character, um, you know, is clearly infatuated with Marissa Tomei, and you know they start to build a bit of a friendship. It turns into a bit of a you know relationship. They kiss at a bar and stuff like that, and she's like, "No, I can't kiss the customers." Blah blah blah, and then it it culminates almost in him you know, show him back up there and she's just not interested and treats him as a customer and so he gets all pissy with her and is like, well, all right, then fucking dance for me, here's some money, whatever, and they kind of go the separate ways and then eventually she finally has enough based on the conversation she's had with him and goes, you know what, I'm giving up and she walks off stage and she tries to stop him at the end of, you know, from having that match, which, you know, as as you mentioned briefly then, Anthony, you know, throughout, he... After he's taken all the steads and the cocaine and he's put himself through all, you know, I think he has a death match, which again shows how far his character has fallen from main eventing in like the garden to being in a death match where he's like talking to someone about getting stapled in the head. He's never done it before and stuff like that. And ultimately he's backstage and he ends up having some kind of heart attack. He has heart surgery, massive scar. And that's when he goes, you know what? I'm not. I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm, I'm giving up. And, he, you know, he changes his life, tries to reconnect with his daughter, as you said. But he then has the opportunity to go back and, you know, after he's had that little bit of a fight with Marissa Tomei, he decides he's going to do it. You know, his daughter doesn't want him. Marissa Tomei doesn't want him. So he's like, yeah, that's the only thing I've got left. And he goes out to do that match, um, knowing full well that he shouldn't be doing it. And she arrives just in time to stop him from having that match and that's all he wanted and he still goes ahead with the match and it's kind of like that's the only bit where I'm a bit like and I get why they did it from a standpoint though from like not to criticise the film because it's a fantastic film but would you have preferred a scenario in which she was too late yeah because like I don't think they need to film ambiguous but they kind of don't show you you know what I mean so Mm -hmm. um, I'll I'll spoil the ending for anyone who's um, who's not seen it, but essentially there's a point in the ring when his opponent, the Ayatollah, can see that he's, he's done and he's trying to encourage him to just go for the pin, but he decides to go up to the top rope to do his finisher, which is like a, a diving headbutt, I believe, Carl. Um, and they kind of leave you wondering, after he's hit his finisher and had his moment, they leave you wondering whether he, he ever survives. And I think they make it quite clear that he doesn't that he's pushed himself too far, yeah. but they don't actually show you that. So um, I don't know how you feel about that, but I personally think it, they've made it quite clear what's going on there, which well, again, makes that, that bit with her rather more important as well. Yeah, you know, earlier on, they set it up the first time he had his, like, his, his heart attack or, or, you know, or whatever it was, it was the same music, the same actions he was doing and stuff like that, where it was all a bit like getting hazy and, you know, everything sounds a bit echoey and stuff. And then... It was the same stuff that was happening again. So obviously, it, it led you to believe that. I, um, I love stuff like that. I love when a film. I, I think they, they use the term quite often when you're a film buff, Carl. So you'll know this one. Um, for those who don't know, Carl, massive film buff. Um, <laughs> but they use the term show, don't tell. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they didn't have a guy go, oh, he's dead, because they don't <laughs> need to tell you. Do you know what I mean? Like, they've shown you in everything they've set up and uh, all those little subtle cues that you just pointed out there. 
they make mm-hmm. it very obvious so they've shown you they don't need to tell you so i yeah. think it, it's fairly obvious but they don't go they don't have a moment where they're like oh my god do you know what i mean yeah but i, th- I think it, it, the end of it's fairly it's confusing. funny because you know i don't know whether like i know obviously my my wife hates films like this because any any movie which ends like with such like an ambiguous ending where it's like you have to make your own mind up she's very much of the opinion like oh what the fuck did i sit through that for then where it's like well but at the same time i think it is down to that show don't tell mentality where it's like you know it's not about necessarily having to make your own mind up it's like did you catch what really the ending was it's like almost you get it with like inception and it's like you know they spun the spinny top and it's like is it you know, are we in a dream? Is it real? Okay. And like, okay. You know, you're going to well, into other films, right? Here's one. I, I like the ending pisses me off, right? And there's so many people who are like, will act like film buffs and nerds and, and try and justify this shit, right? You ever seen the film Enemy? With Jake Gyllenhaal. Um, I don't think I watched it. To be fair, no. Don't. Right. Is this where justify. he's like the, the news reporter or something? Or was that? Oh, was, or was that? Or was that Night Stalker? I can't remember. I think that might be Night Stalker. He's a or a news photographer, but he's like weirdly fascinating. This one, essentially, the the story is it's kind of weird. They go for a lot of imagery that involves spiders, right? Um, that's relevant in a sec. But he finds out he's got a doppelganger. So he's like a professor, and he finds out he's got someone who looks exactly like him, who's an actor. I don't know why we're doing this, but we're fucking doing it. We're at the movies, right? Finds out so he, they've got this total, like, absolute spit of him who's like an actor and he's essentially living the life that he wants, right? And then they meet, they discover that, like, they both got partners, but they're both sort of dissatisfied with their own lives. So they'd make this weird little deal to switch. And then they, they switch lives, and like, for whatever reason, his the guy's wife and his doppelganger end up in a car crash of death, and he's kind of like left, like. Well, I might as well just take over his life. So he's like with this guy's girlfriend towards the end of the film and living his life as this movie star. And you're like, okay, fair enough. And then very last scene of the film, Carl, and you might need to watch the film to maybe get where they were going with this, but I've seen it more than once to try and understand this shit and I still don't. Goes over to the bedroom to speak to his his now girlfriend or whatever and looks into the room and she's a giant spider. I knew that was coming. Um, I'm all for ambiguous endings. But what the fuck was that? At no point did they address why she was a giant spider or what's going on there or what is the it like, got to do with the fucking film. Is it like some kind of thing about it being a black widow or something? I don't know. There's some sort of um, representation of like, because there was like a another little subplot of like the the famous guy went to this club where they watch women step on tranches with high heels because, I don't know, kink, I guess. So, that, like, the, the weave spiders in and out of this film, and, like, so many people are like, well, it represents this, it represents that. I'm like, no, it's just a weird fucking ending, and, and I, then, I, I don't care. I don't care. So, what basically, stupid. Basically, after that, Jake Gyllenhaal went on to do Spider Man. So, what you're saying is he's got some weird fetish for spiders. Cool. Well, Good if you think know. about it, you spent um, that entire film trying to squash uh, Peter Parker, so that makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense. Yeah, so, um, sorry to digress anyway. into anyway, but that, that is probably the. <laughs> The worst ending for well, let's leave it to your imagination that I've ever fucking had. Yeah. Right. No. Um, no. It's uh, it's good to know. I'll have to uh, I'll have to watch it. <laughs> Sounds crazy as fuck. Um, but no, I do think um, it definitely is an ambiguous ending with this film, and but not really. I think you know it's it's pretty clear what what has happened there. I think I my think only he set it up perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. The only sad part for me is the fact that you know she left. She left her job for him. You know, which is what he wanted, and he still he basically went ah fuck you. I'm doing it anyway. And it was like, well, why? You know what I mean? So for me, the difference would have been if, if she was too late, if she would have turned up and he didn't know, and maybe well, you know he saw her. Yeah, and, like yes, he saw it, but too late or something like that. Yeah, yeah. like that. That yeah. would have made it just absolutely perfect for me. But you know, by and large, that that one aspect of it doesn't ruin what is a. A fantastic film, a fantastic performance from Mickey Rourke, a fantastic performance from Marissa I, I, I mean, Let's talk about um, that. I mean, I, I've i only ever... Like, Mickey Rourke was, like, super big at one point and probably slightly out of our generation, to be fair, Carl. I don't really know Mickey Rourke from a lot, right? So I'm like... Uh, my examples were, like, Iron Man 2 or The Expendables hmm. and bits like that. So there's this guy who had a lot of plastic surgery and... 
everyone knew the name, but I'd not really known a lot of great films he was in. And, you know, come at me for that guy's wee once, but, like, because I know he's super famous and he's probably been in loads of films that people love, but he, he never hit any films that I'd loved, do you know what I mean? So I didn't really know him as an actor. But this film, he was absolutely fantastic in. I give him so much credit, like, because, like you say, he, he sold, sold this character just fantastically. To the yeah. point, I think you want to make a little antic, uh, little, I thought being almost patronised with a little antic those about uh, Roddy, Roddy Piper. Um, so I think it might be... Well, a, yeah, so my, my little insignificant an- uh, anecdote about Roddy <laughs> Piper, Anthony. Um, no, it just so happens to be, obviously, anyone who watches this show, listens to this show, knows what a huge fan of Roddy Piper I was. I still think he's probably one of the best promos, if not the best promo in the business today. Um so absolute legend obviously such a shame that he's, he's gone on to pass but you know he got to see this film before he did pass um and the director um is it who is it um darren darren arnofsky is it um i can't remember i think he's the director but basically he mm-hmm. told a story about how piper saw you know the film um and ended up just crying absolutely wailing in, in mickey rock's arms and just said what a what a true to life you know depiction it was um mm. and like honestly it, it 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 so is you know these I these wrestlers the- especially from like the 80s and early 90s you know before it, it took off these guys put you know they did everything which the wrestlers of like the likes of the rock and stone cold stuff did they put their bodies on the line you know and absolutely every night of the week you know with grueling schedules injuries you know pushing through them and everything and just didn't get the financial reward at the end of it the wrestling business moved on and they were just left knowing nothing else they were just these guys who were wrestlers who had nothing and you know all the things that he goes through in this you know he has a little indie match um he has yeah you know he has to lower himself to a death match he's going to a convention where there's no one turning up to sign autographs and it's just like you know they're always they're telling the story of like this big you know the match at the garden between him and the ayatollah and this big spectacle that happened and then to think of what a fall from grace he's been on um and it just he knows nothing else you know it's and you know piper never had that fall from grace necessarily because he was a big star you know his star did fade a little bit he went to the like, the ic title scene and stuff like that um and then you know went on to do uh, they live the movie and and some other stuff mm-hmm. so he was still quite big but then he went to wcw didn't really happen for him so he never really was the mickey raw character in this um but you just know so many of the friends he had that's that's what would have got him i think i think that's the thing and to be honest i think there's nothing not you know we have an idea right from things we've seen documentaries we've seen you know, we we don't truly know, and I think like it, it gets us, and we go, God, that that's so like so realistic from what we know. But when someone like Roddy Piper, who's been in the business, like you say, he's seen friends like that, he's probably been through some elements of that himself. Like for him to to say to to Mickey that it's so true to life, and for it to get him that emotionally, it shows you how sort of faithful we've been to like to the sort of real life elements of this. And yeah. how true that story is, like you say. Like I think there's no stronger endorsement than the reaction that he had. No, it's like imagine, imagine that fall from grace of being someone who's been at a WrestleMania in front of like you know sixty thousand, seventy thousand fans, to then go into a high school gym in front of a hundred people. Mm. And it's like, yeah. how jarring must that be to know what? Oh, uh, you know, it's like that that age old thing of like you know telling your your kids or your grandkids, ah, well, uh, back back in the day, I used to be this. And it's like, well, you know, that's it's such a horrible thing for them to, you know, these guys who are mega stars to just have to see the stars just almost fade out. Um, mm. And that's that's what the story does, you know, a fantastic job of. Like literally, mm. he's working mm. in, he's working in a bloody, you know, a deli counter in a in a supermarket, and you know, to the point you said where, you know, people do start to recognise him, but you know, it ends up having the opposite effect where it's not so much boosting his ego or people recognising him, but he doesn't want to be that guy anymore to the point where he, you know he shoves his fucking hand in a, a meat grinder at one point in, the, in there yeah, because yeah. he's just he's had enough at that point of, you know of his life his, his daughter doesn't want him you know you know Marissa Tomei's character doesn't want him you know the I mean, rest of the world doesn't want his, him his boss was a dick as well and like, his boss was a dick <laughs> um, and you know he's getting recognised by a fan going oh wow I can't believe you're working here you know and it's like 
you know a culmination of, of things um yeah you know it's it, yeah it's such an emo- like an emotional roller coaster just you know i'm i'm a huge fan of character driven films and this is just it's right up my alley i just think you know you get to see the whole journey he's been on and you know ultimately that that final scene where you know regardless of, of what could have been handled better between him and you know Marissa Tomei i think that final scene of him just this is what he loves to do it's all he's ever known it's all he's ever wanted and regardless of whether he's in front of thousands of people with the Ayatollah or, you know, a WrestleMania or whether he's, you know, in front of a couple of hundred in a high school gym, um, you know, many years later, this is all he's ever known. It's all he's ever wanted. And, you know, he's, if, he, if he's going to die, he's going to die doing what he loves. And that's ultimately yeah. what it. And I think it's that decision as well. Like, not that this was the deciding point because he'd already put his body through it, but like mm. he had the choice between going for the pin or hitting his finisher, which he knew was going to get the crowd. And yeah. he wanted to tell that story, and he put that above his own life. It was insane. You know what I mean? But I mean, like... obviously, is it um, is it Ernest the Cat Miller who plays the Ayatollah? I can't remember. I think it is. Um, but he, you know, he, his his work in this is so underrated, to be honest, because you know he is the like the lifeline, the outlet for him. He sees that he's he's fucked up and he's like suffering. And he's like, oh, you know, I'll I'll take it from here. And he's like bumping himself and everything to try and yeah, just get yeah. through the match. He's like, come on, pin me, pin me. And he just yeah, yeah to be won't, fair, like uh, yeah, you know, it's, he, um, he won't do it. <laughs> you just you know, <laughs> as as a movie watcher, you're like, just fucking pin him, just don't do it. You know, <laughs> pin him, heal up, and just go and have lots of like happy sex with Marissa to me. <laughs> just your life's made. Just do it. Um, and then yeah, Marissa to me end up with Spider Man as well. She did. Yeah, that's weird. That actually, what a weird time. Spider Man a couple of times. Well. Yeah. Hmm. Um, anyway. So yeah, but no, I think. Um, like, on, like honestly, it is a phenomenal film. It's probably my my favorite wrestling movie. You know, I love Ready to Rumble just from the fact that we saw it when but, we were teenagers. It's and, for a very different reason, though, isn't it? Yeah, like, the, but the, there's no no comparing the two really. No, this you know this was nominated for for an Oscar. This you know it won two Baftas. No, sorry, it won a Bafta, two Golden Globes. Um, so you know this was this was a, a proper movie. This you know you don't even have to be a wrestling fan to. You know, I think I think you made like a comparison between Mickey Rourke and um, Sylvester Stallone. Almost like this was Mickey Rourke's Rocky, wasn't it? And it is a similar yeah. story in that vein. You know, I think it's I think it's better. I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. Well, you know, I think it's it's a very um, different story, but it, it's kind of like it, it. Well, it's probably more similar to the later Rocky, like basically Rocky Balboa, which I'm confident came out after the wrestler. So yeah, make of that what you will. Uh, I'm gonna have to Google that now. Bear with me. Um, but because the original Rockies were about him climbing that mountain, you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, so this is a very different story. Two thousand ah fuck Balboa was first. Okay. Okay. So uh, two thousand six Rocky Balboa came out. So this is the rest of the version of Rocky Balboa in a, in a loose way. But they're both mm. really good films. I'm not discrediting the film by saying that, but it is like you say, it's it, it's got that that sort of similar beat where they're, they're past it and they just want to do the thing they love. You know what I mean? Yeah. In, in, in the basics of it, the, the similar tone in that sense. But um, I think that, like, again, I don't know why I'm making a comparison, but I, I love the Rocky films, but my least favourite one is Rocky Balboa. Mm. Um, but I, that's, like, if I, the wrestler does it better, but I think that's because I put, like I, I like wrestling. You know what I mean? And I, think, I feel like it, hit, it hits a better note for me watching the wrestler than it did watching Balboa. Again, you don't have to compare the two. But. Yeah, I think, I mean, if we are going to make that comparison, I think the wrestler tackles a lot, a lot more serious topics than Rocky Balboa does. You know, it's a similar oh, yeah. strand in the sense it's you know Rocky wanting to get back to doing what he does, and then he's like, oh, you know, I'm going to end up having but, to go into I, management or whatever. But at no point do they touch on like the, the what you put your body through and sort of no. substance abuse or anything like that. It's literally just. Obviously, he's lost his wife and he's sad and he wants to do the thing he loves. Uh, are the two basic notes from Rocky, whereas, like you say, re- the wrestler deep dives into a lot of difficult topics. Yeah, and, it, you know, it does it brilliantly as well. Like, you know, I don't even know what, what the runtime of the film is. It's got to be over two hours, but it, it, it honestly just flies by. I think it is a fantastic piece of cinema. Um deserving of any award it's won um and you know any nomination as well because you know 
Mickey Rourke absolutely deserves to be Oscar nominated. So did Marissa Tomei. The film itself for the for the topic, the genre, for the, the story. I, I honestly can't recommend it enough. Even if yeah. <laughs> not that anyone listens to this wouldn't be a wrestling fan, but even if you're not a wrestling fan, I do believe you would. Um, you know, you would you would love this film. It's just such a gritty, you know, raw kind of crazy film of crazy stories mm. of, of someone's kind of not even like a redemption arc but like somebody's refusal to to give up I guess yeah yeah because it's like it's it is like say the ending's got so many levels to it because like he's is it kind of a happy ending for him in a weird way like yeah he got what he wanted he went out on his own terms and got what he wanted he got the crowd back he got that moment before he died but then he didn't have to die. It's such a like like you say that it, it, it's such a sad and it's such a it is it's a fantastic film. There's not much more we can say about it to be honest. Um, no. For those who want to know, one hour forty nine minutes is the runtime. Okay, see, that's why that's why it absolutely flew by because it wasn't two hours. Um, well, no, no. no. Um, yeah. yeah, I think obviously ninety eight percent score on Rotten Tomatoes as well, um, which speaks volumes. You know, super highly rated by the critics as well as just general fans. Um, so yeah, you know, the first time I saw it, I was just blown away by it, and I've I've probably seen it about two or three times um, since then as well. I just, I just think it's, you know, it's fantastic. IMDb criminally give it a seven point nine out of ten. Really? Yeah, which by any other standards would be a good rating, but it deserves more than that. That is uh, uh, also Ernest, Ernest Miller was the yeah, Ayatollah. Uh, okay, I think um, to answer your earlier question, I think the Ayatollah is based on the Iron Sheik. Makes sense. Um, is my my thought process on that? But as I said, yeah. there's no comparison to Jericho. It's just because you say Ayatollah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, you know, obviously we get some cameos as well. I think uh, our truth is in the film. Um, you know, at various points as well. Uh, I think the you know there must be others. Um, but yeah, oh, I think yeah, yeah but there's got to be like. Um... I'm just seeing if, there, if there's any like quickly listed here, but because uh, obviously it has that. I mean, you mentioned the whole Lanny Poffo thing, which was uh, fascinating. Yeah. I actually never knew that. Uh, for those yeah. who um, didn't listen to our previous segments, he was almost in the film. Never quite made. He was. He was almost in it. Apparently, he um, he looked too good, not dishevelled enough yeah, to yeah. fit the tone of the movie. Um, so yeah, think, which is why yeah, I, I joked. I know, <laughs> yeah. What are you trying to say about me? So yeah, I, you know, obviously made the joke that, you know, he obviously came on our show, which means that, you know, yeah, so. it's, our show was full of uh, beautiful people. So there is that. We talking over everything over. The- yeah. Which is really well. Very poignant. You know, you got the the, the, the stuff you do, um, Oh, the resurrection yeah. and stuff like that. That's so, a good uh, point. We, um, those are all very different. What are we talking like? Your go-to. The film, best one you've ever seen. Are we talking about? Yeah, I would say so. I think this is my favorite wrestling related movie. Um, Beyond the Mat is also another fan favorite, as is Ready to Rumble. Um, you know, Relentless from um, DDP was fantastic as well. Have you not seen that? But yeah, mm. you know, it's it, it's a limited catalog of of things, unfortunately. Um, it's but this because you've got like I say, you've got the Resurrection of Jake, you've got Fight on My Family. There's a film which I've not seen yet called Choke Slam. We've got, um, I mean, the is actually getting a little bit richer, which is good. We've uh, we've branched out into TV now with Heels, which is uh, looking pretty decent, and to be fair. Young Rock. Young Rock. Which first episode of Young Rock I watched today, actually, and I was like straight out of the gate. They're like, well, there's the Iron Sheik, Andre the Giant, <laughs> the Wild Samoans. I'm like, God damn, you just throw some characters at me right now. I know. Um, but awesome, nonetheless. Um, no, definitely. But yeah, it's, uh, it, it's getting to be a rich area. I mean, one that I still haven't watched yet that I really want to watch is um, You Can't Kill David Arquette, which is another documentary film. 
but uh, I was yeah. still need to watch that. It looks like it's like a really good. Like, David Arquette's had such a uh, tumultuous relationship with wrestling that like that's in itself going to be fascinating for a whole different reason. Really. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, so yeah, maybe maybe that's the next one we do that one or be on the mat or something. But we will mm-hmm. be back at the movies um, at some point soon. But mm-hmm. yeah, hopefully hope you, you enjoyed, enjoyed our this sort of slight <laughs> dive into and thoughts on the wrestler. But honest to God. Fantastic film. If for whatever reason you've not seen it and you're clearly a wrestling fan because you listen to a wrestling podcast, you have to see it. It's awesome. Yeah, no, 100%. Um, can't have any higher praise for it than, than what I've said, really. Um, definitely check it out. If you know It was good enough to make the, you know, the legendary Roddy Piper cry uh, when he watched it. So, you know, that in itself just speak volumes ahead of just us two schmucks <laughs> saying that we like it. So check it out. Um, great film. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it was fun being back at the movies with you all. Um, so I'm sure we'll be back again at some point uh, with one of the many other films to talk about. But... Let's all go to the lobby. <laughs> Do you know what? I was going to ask you what um, I was going to ask you about that actually. What what that little jingle was for the American movies? I was like, oh, we're going to have to play that oh, yeah, at some point. But... That's the funny thing because we never actually had that. That's like something that no. we, we know about. We had the um, American films. What did we have? Well, Pearl and Dean. I think we had Pearl and Dean. Yeah. yeah. Not quite the same. Um, I think something that we all universally share is the um, the THX and Oh yeah, that one. Um, but yeah, I think maybe that should be the outro to eight to eight movies now. <laughs> what means come? Yeah, your version of it as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, Anthony, another fun filled week of the eight to eight wrestling show. We went through uh, the previous that, week's wrestling. Cried. We have. We went through all the latest news and rumours. Many a tangent over there as well. Controversial week, obviously off the back of the rate. They're playing Riot from Hell, Dark Side of the Ring episode. And then we've finished up, culminated with um, going to the movies, talking about what is probably the greatest wrestler movie of all time, The Wrestler. Um, so Now we're going to go and have a cry. We are. It's been emotional, guys. <laughs> it has. Um, but we'll be back before you know it, um, probably on Tuesday. Maybe, unless we're lazy again. Um, yeah, it has been fun, as it always is. We will speak to you then. Like us, subscribe to us, follow us on social. On social, don't just follow us around. And you know, he's not asking you. He's fucking telling you. Yeah, do it. <laughs> no, 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 please. You know, just fucking do it. I didn't say like click us. the not- Follow us. Didn't say click the notification bell, though, because that's just for notification bells. Um <laughs> Yeah, you don't you, you don't want to be notified. You don't need to check us out. You're gonna go look on anyway. Well, exactly. You just check us out in your own time. You know, we're cool with that. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, another fun fill week. Thank you for joining us. Check us out. Uh, available on all the social medias. Uh, you can listen to us in the car if you haven't got time to watch us on YouTube. Um, you can. You can listen to us at a bar. You can. You can listen to us from afar. You can listen to us wherever you want. You can listen to us while drinking a jar. Um, Yeah, and we will be back uh, next week. So thank you once again for checking out the show. And peace. Bye. Hey, guys. It's Georgia Smith here, and you've heard me on A to the K. These guys are awesome. Check it out. A to the K. A to the K. A to the K.